السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الحمد لله على نعمة العافية الحمد لله that Allah عز وجل he give us a proper health الحمد لله till today that we can meet and uh, we thank some of the students who already took fiqh before with us the foundation of uh, the basics of uh, fiqh and um, this lecture actually maybe some of the students they are not aware uh, it has been selected by the previous students alhamdulillah um, we had uh, we did voting regarding the which lectures to be taught uh, for the coming after the introduction of fiqh or the basics of fiqh uh, the students they uh, were really encouraged before to continue with the coming lecture that related to uh, the fiqh. Uh, Islamic ruling, it is part of fiqh, bidna la ta'ala. And inshallah, it's going to be a very easy for you to understand. And I want you also from this lessons to uh, catch up with some of the Arabic words. So we'll explain it in English. And the Arabic words, you need to understand it. If sometimes they say al-hukm al-shari'i, you, you need to understand what is the meaning of al-hukm al-shari'i in 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 uh, in English, so you don't get confused. Some of the sheikh, if they say al hukm al sharii, so you understand. And this knowledge, I would say, it is li a little bit elevated, more than the normal knowledge. Some of the students, which they were the students of IIC, which they finish already the um, all the levels, uh, it would be very suitable for them to take this. Lecture and if the student is really interested about the fiqh and just to understand the fiqh in general, also it will be suitable for her, inshallah. It will be very light and we'll try to be very light and very specific. All right, um, this lecture for the moment is going to be each Saturday, if it is suitable at nine. And we already we took the voting, so uh, maybe majority it is suitable for them to be on Saturday at nine. And again, we'll check the voting if it is suitable for you. Um, if it is one time or once a week, if it is suitable, then we will keep on. Or if you wanted to have twice a week, also we will check, we will do voting through the Telegram Ibn al uh, The sisters who took Fakh with us before, they know our system, how we do regarding such kind of lectures. We do have serious exams is going on and uh, the exams, it doesn't mean anything. It's just to evaluate your understanding and to, to enhance it more. And this lecture, you will find some similarities between this lectures and the previous also as well, because before you had only the presentation or the introduction of it, then this one, it will enhance it more because of the previous information that you had it. Even if the students they didn't join us before, inshallah, they will find it even lighter to understand it. Also for them, they can join our previous lectures if they want to go through the our channel. They can uh, check the, uh, the lectures which we had before. And also they can do the exams, perform the exams like the others. All right, so let us start. Um, to be honest, knowledge is non-stopping and knowledge, it is an important thing in our life. And knowledge also, it gives barakah in your life and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourage us to have knowledge. Um, don't say it is a waste of time. It never was wasted of time to learn about Islamic rules, to understand your fiqh, to understand what are you standing on. Uh, it's, how, why do we learn how to pray? Why do we learn what is the virtues of the fasting? Why do we learn uh, to wear hijab? Why do we learn to be good with the others? So all this, it comes under the Islamic ruling. The Islamic ruling, it will give you a wider understanding and how to evaluate things. And by, by itself, you will try to understand like this is allowed and this is not allowed. Uh, what Islam said specifically about this matter. So it's all, it categorized under the Islamic ruling and Allah Azza wa Jal, he's blessing the person who's seeking for the knowledge. So never think it is a waste of time. For today's lecture, um, we will have a definition. It will be inshallah very quick. And we need to understand today's lecture because it's very important to understand today's, today's lecture. It will be based on the coming lectures inshallah. So what we will be learning, what is the differences between fiqh, 
we already hear fiqh, fiqh, fiqh. What is fiqh? And what is usul al-fiqh? If there is any differences between them, so we're gonna to learn today, inshallah. And what is the differences between overall evidence, yani the general evidence and the specific evidence? What are the differences between them? Because these are the main things which we're gonna relate on them in the future, whenever we want to extract information to analyze analysis information. So we need to understand what is the overall evidence and what is this specific evidence and those evidence from where it comes from. Bismillah. Islamic ruling, from where is this fiqh comes from? And I think so the, the sisters, they can answer because some of the sisters, they already took with us the fiqh before. How this course, I mean, I mean this, the sources of the fiqh, where it came from, how it came to us, and is there any foundation which help us to extract out fiqh from the sources? So if anybody of the sisters, you would like to join us, from where is the fiqh come from? Where do we get our information of fiqh? I hope it is an easy answer. Uh, anybody can raise her hand and we can allow her to talk, inshallah. Anybody has any clue? the fuck from where it comes from. All right, Sister uh, Floor. From Quran and Sunnah, mainly. Anybody want to add? Okay, somebody wrote something on the chat. Sunnah, Hadith, and Quran. Okay, Sister Fatima, she answered. Barakallahu fiki. Also, there is any source that we get our uh, fuck from? What did we take in fiqh before? Also from the four schools, the madhab. Yes, so the madhab comes from where actually? What does it called the madhab? It has a name. After the Prophet Muhammad passed away, from where they took their fiqh also from, if you remember? Some of them they said al-imma and all the others who said what they said, the students? From the Sahaba. From the Sahaba, yes. So there is something called ijma. Ijma al-Sahaba, our fiqh, we took it from ijma al-Sahaba, ijma al-imma, as the sister also said. Barakallahu fikum wa jazakum Allahu khayr. So we'll come and explain it more for the sisters who are not uh, familiar with it, but All right. Islamic ruling. What is Islamic ruling means? Yani the Arabic word of it, al hukm al shari Okay, al hukm al shari the word in Arabic, in English, Islamic ruling. So what does it mean? There is something here, as you can see, the differences what is the differences between ilm uh, al-fiqh and ilm usul al-fiqh? When we say fiqh, fiqh is, fiqh is general. It's uh, a knowledge, okay? So jurisprudence is, is general. But there is something here, the only difference is called usul al-fiqh. Usul means there is something about foundation. So here as a knowledge of fiqh, and here knowledge of fiqh, but it has foundation. Okay, so there is two words. There is ilm al-fiqh, on knowledge of jurisprudence, and we have the knowledge of jurisprudence foundation. So it's the same, the only added here is foundation, right? And this is what we'll be focusing, inshallah, for the coming slides. And the Islamic ruling, it is one, of the doors of fiqh, the origin of fiqh, or the foundation doors from the fiqh. So Islamic ruling, it comes under the fiqh. So if you open the fiqh, like the fiqh, it is in the top. And then when you open it, it comes ruling, 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 Islamic ruling, Islamic ruling, Islamic ruling under it. So there is rules under the fiqh. So Islamic ruling, it is one of the doors of fiqh, 
one of the doors of the fuqh. All right, we'll come to it, inshallah, and explain it more in the coming slide. If you find it any difficult, you can ask any question. So we said, again, fuqh, it's the big umbrella. What it comes under it, there is rules. For example, rules of basala, rules of batahara, rules of um, uh, like selling and buying, okay? So the rules that it comes under the fuqh. So the fuqh, it is the big umbrella that it holds many rules under it. Till here it is clear. So if we say Islamic ruling, okay? The Islamic ruling, it comes under the, under the fuqh. So the fuqh by itself, what is the meaning of fuqh? Fuqh means Islamic ruling. Yani in short, fuqh means fuqh ruling, yani the rules that is, it comes related to worship Allah Azza wa Jal, transaction, anything, any kind of rules. So if you want to say, what is fuqh? Somebody will ask you, you will say, there are rules that is related about worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal, like the salah, the tahara, and the other thing, the transaction that we needed in our life, how the relation of the ruling. That's it, simply as that. Now, if we will, we will take this ruling, the rules, and we will try to identify it. What is this rule? This rule, it matters related to a specific thing in fiqh, because as we said, fiqh could be rules in salah, rules in tahara, rules in the relationship, rules in the transaction. So rules, it is a specific thing, a specific uh, title. For example, I say rules, the doors of tahara, the doors of salah. And salah, if you open the doors of salah, there is many types of salah under it. So again, the salah, it is a title. It is one of the rules, but under the salah, there is salah for salat al-dhuhr, salat al-maghrib, and there is al-nawafid, and there is qiyam al-layl, there is tahajjud, there is, there is many categories that it comes under it, okay? So again, fiqh contains rules, and the rules is a specific thing as in general, in general, and there is things under it. So I would specify rules. It is a specific. I specified this door. This is the door of Salah, the door of Tahara. I hope till here it is clear, inshallah. Okay? And the fiqh, as the sisters, they said, from where we, we take this fiqh? From where do we take this fiqh? We take it from the Quran. We take it from the Sunnah. We take from the Ijma' al-Sahaba, Ijma' al imma Ijma' al-Sahaba, Sahaba means the, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they had a companion, right? So the companion that which they came after the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All right, uh, Sister Fatima, she wrote this uh, Islamic ruling, uh, the way of life based on Islamic, Barakallahu Fiki. Yeah. So the, we take our sources, the fiqh from the Quran, from the Sunnah, from the Ijma' al-Sahaba, the companions, which they were with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for example, Abu Bakr, uh, Umar bin al-Khattab, Uthman bin Affan, Ali bin Abi Talib, those are the companions of the Prophet and the others that they were there in those days. And Ijma' al-A'imma, the A'imma al-Mujtahideen, which we took it in the fiqh, there is the names of the, the, the big scholars, which they were playing a big role in Islamic, and one of them, uh, four of them, the famous that the Madhab al-Hanafi and Madhab Maliki and Madhab Shafi'i and uh, and the other Madhab, which we know already that is the approved, only the main four ones. Okay, there is another thing called Qiyas. Now we'll come to Qiyas, what does it mean? Okay, Qiyas means to evaluate. Okay, and there is something called Al-Istihsan, Masalah al-Mursala, Sadd al we'll come to it, inshallah, what is the meaning of it? in more details as we promised you in the previous um, in the previous course. All right, again, so the knowledge of fiqh, did it stop here? Yani when the fiqh came, it didn't stop till there 
and that's it. And we left it since the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he passed away. No, the, the fiqh continued, okay? And how the fiqh came to us? The fiqh came to us, as you know, from Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whether by it's written in the Quran or by the Sunnah. And then the fiqh continued by the Sahaba and by the companions and the A'imma al-Mujtahideen. So what are the rules and basic foundation to help us extracting those Islamic rules? We'll come to it. This is the answer that we're gonna get it in these classes, bi'ithnillah ta'ala. So if you wanna learn how to answer on your, for example, some enemies which they come and attack us in, and why do you do this? Why do you wear this? And so on. So how to answer them in a proper way is from the Islamic rulings. So if you understand the Islamic rulings, then, and how to extract that information from it, then it will be easier for you. You can negotiate with the people to talk about Islam. So if you're looking um, forward to understand more about the Islamic ruling, so you're in the uh, right position in this lecture, bidnillah ta'ala. All right. And as you know, if you wanna start to understand anything, you need to understand the definition. So the scholar, they identify Islamic ruling in two ways. One, it is word by word, and the other one, it is the combined one. Uh, just let us start with the combined one. Maybe it's the easiest one. It's like a nickname. For example, you say apple tree. Apple tree, if it is a nickname, so you take it as a nickname, as one word. You don't, you don't um, uh, remove apple as an explanation and tree as an explanation. No, apple tree is a nickname. So it's like it's explained as one word, all right? And the other way, which word by word, I have to explain what does it apple means and what does tree means. So this is how the Islamic ruling definition as the scholars, they identify it. And everywhere, whenever you open any books of fiqh, sometimes you will find it very complicated because they always explain in like apple, what does it mean? And tree, what does it mean? They have always to explain it. And they have two ways of explaining the word by word. Apple, like what is the uh, international name of it? And what is the local name of it? So even, for example, plantation, if anybody knows about plants, if she opens on the uh, Wikipedia or she wants to open in Google and she writes rose, for example, or um, she writes orange, okay? So it will say what? The international word of this plant means this. And the local meaning of it, this is the meaning. So this is what you're gonna find also in fiqh. There is the general meaning, which it is understood and used. And there is a specific meaning. What is the meaning of it? It's used in the Islamic way or the people of the hadith, okay? So this is how it is presented. Um, you're gonna find it a lot while we are learning the definition. So inshallah, it will not be bothering you, but I have to explain this part that you can understand the coming slides with Nila Ta'ala. All right, so we'll start word by word, okay? Word by word, Islamic, what does it mean? For example, when it explains and ruling, what does it mean? But in, in general, we will start with usul al-fiqh. Since we are studying now usul al-fiqh, because the fiqh it is the main thing and under it, it comes the Islamic ruling. Usul means, if you hear usul al-fiqh, what usul al-fiqh means? What do you mean by usul? So usul means base. In, in, in the language of Arabic, when you say usul means base, base of something, anything. If you say usul, this is asal, means this is the origin of something. Okay, uh, what is the origin of the door? For example, is the wood, okay, or X. So the origin of the wood and the origin of the wood is from the tree. So what is the origin of the door is, for example, uh, the, the, the tree, because the tree, it has the, the wood, okay? So this is the meaning of the origin, okay? Usul means origin, base, base of the something. So when you get this door, what is the origin of this door? It is from the tree. 
All right. And there is something called like a noun. As we said, you have something international and you have something specific. So al istilah, okay, mustalah or al istilah here, you will find it always in Arabic. There is the language means al lugha, the explanation meaning of al lugha or usul. It is explained in two ways. Usul means the basic meaning, yani the non meaning everybody knows about it, and there is the other word which the Islamic way which they explain it. So al mustalah or al istilah, it means evidence. Yani, if I say usul al fiqh, I mean the evidence of fiqh in istilah. If I ask you what in the language or lugha the meaning of usul, then you will tell me that usul means base. So the definition of usul has two ways. The first way is by language, the common language is base. By specific as mustalah, like the uh, Islamic way, if they want to explain about usul, then they mean the evidence. So if you hear usul al-fiqh, then you will understand it is evidence, the evidence or the overall base or the origin of the things. They're different. Yes, it has the same meaning, but it is identified in different way as explanation. In Arabic, always if you open the Arabic dictionary, you will find it in language, how it is explained, and in istilah, how it is explained. Always, you cannot run away from it. It's always explained in two things, okay? So the origin of things to be as same as it is, the meaning. The water, I will give you an example, the water, okay? If you say the water, is it allowed or it is not allowed in general? The water, is it allowed or it's not allowed in Islam? Allowed. Why? Because it's clear. There is no such uh, chemicals mix that makes a... Uh... Uh, destroy our body. Water is uh, used for it, wudu. Let me put it in a different way. For example, am I allowed to go and take wudu from the sea? Yeah. Yes. Why? Because uh, that is the available water uh, to use. It, it's, there's a ruling that uh, uh, in making wudu, if there is no water available, you can use it, this, uh, which is available, this, the sea water. You want to tell me I cannot use it unless if the water it is not available, then I can use it. No, I'm no saying you can use because it's this uh, pure water. There's no such chemical mix. Yes, pure water. Because water in general, in general, it is clear. Water from yeah. the sea, water from the river, water from anywhere, from anything that it comes from. So the origin of the... Um, the evidence of this water, it is clear. Yeah, okay? no, con so no is, contamination. Yes, so the origin of the thing is clear. This is what I wanted to, to say. So the origin, the overall base, it is allowed, it is clear. I don't need to say this is allowed or not allowed or something like that, or maybe, and something like that. The origin of things is allowed, okay? Just let us keep it simple as it is. The origin of things is allowed. All right, this is the meaning of the overall base, the origin of things to be allowed. This is the meaning of it, all right? We continue. Unless Allah Azza wa Jal or the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam forbidden. Yani, for example, are we allowed to eat all the meat? Any kind no. of meat? No, no, there are such meats that are not allowed for us. For example? Pig. Yes. It's not allowed for us to eat because this is forbidden in Islam. There is another meat which is not allowed? I yes. can't remember. There is another meat that we're not allowed to eat when the, when the meat uh, is uh, dead. Dead animals. Okay. Are not the allowed animals to eat. are not to, Yeah. Okay, barakallahu fikum. So the general, if you if you count how many things we are not allowed to eat, it's very few, right? Maybe two things, maybe three things we are not allowed to eat as meat, like, right? Like snake, like this. Okay, barakallahu fikum. So 
The meaning the general in overall eating is allowed. Meat is allowed unless if it was specified whether by Allah Azza wa Jal in the Quran or in the Sunnah that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, or the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam they forbidden us not to eat it or mukrah that is better to be or better not to have it or not to eat it. Okay. All right. Or sometimes something it is written in the Quran and we have new inventions nowadays, all right? If I want to say, uh, uh, for example, I want to say drugs, is drugs allowed? Allowed if this uh, uh, use for medication, yeah? Oh, to heal. Yes, but I want but to say not, the drugs but not allowed if this body. will be yes. abused. There is uh, some chemicals that can abuse our body, like uh, the drugs used for the you know the, the, the destroy your body, like like uh, some chemicals like powder, like for ecstasy. Right. So I'm talking something about like the this. one that abuse the body, for example. Are we allowed to have it? No. Why? Because uh, it says in Quran that uh, we are not allowed to use that medicine that, uh, you know, the, to destroy our body or uh, the inner part. In the Quran, it is not written. No, medicine I mean. Destroy, it's not written. No, because it is, uh, you know, Damage. some drugs will, uh, like alcohol. We're not allowed to drink alcohol, right? As well as these drugs that uh, you know that makes you know the the mentality that destroy your awareness, something like this. All right, let me see, Sister Fatima Alido. She wants to say something. Sorry, anything that will damage our selves, our you our human nature, because our human nature is a gift from Allah, so it was trusted to us to do a better, better, to use it in a better way, not to damage it. Barakallahu alaikum. All right, what I'm trying to say is, okay, so there is a sister on Matar, she said it is haram. Why it is haram? Since you said haram, why it is haram? The drugs that create the same effect that alcohol in our consciousness, which, um, not allow us to think properly and to behave normally are haram. All right, so this is something what she gave an example. It's called, and the sisters also, which they already, barakallahu fikum, which they answered the question, like it's, it's similar to alcohol. So when you say similar to alcohol, because drugs, drugs weren't there since the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam days, for example, and it was not known in the Prophet days. So in the Quran, nothing called drugs. There is no thing called in Arabic mukhaddarat, for example, okay? So how the, uh, the scholars, how they evaluated this matter, they equal it, they measured it by the alcohol because the alcohol, it makes the brain not sober. The same time, the, the drugs does the same thing to the human. So they evaluate it and measured it and they assume it, it has the same results of that, then it is not allowed or they said this is haram. So this is called qiyas. So the qiyas, something available in the Quran or Sunnah, it has been evaluated with it, all right? So Islamic ruling now will have another category. There is a category called Quran. The second one is Sunnah. The third one is called Ijma. The, third one, the fourth one is al-qiyas. Al-qiyas, it doesn't come from our brain. Al-Qiyas, it comes something available in the Quran or in the Sunnah, it has been evaluated equal to it. This is the meaning of Al-Qiyas. All right? Then we continue. Now, we already identify what is the meaning of Usul. Usul, we, we said it's the base, right? And the Istilah, meaning, it is more, who can tell me the istilah? Usul istilah, al-mustalah. What is al-mustalah? Means evidence. Evidence. 
evidence, okay? So when I say the language, how, what does it mean? Lugha means base of something. Uh, if he, I want to say, if I will ask you, what is the mustalah of usul means evidence, the overall base, okay? Just keep it in mind. Now we will go to fiqh. Fiqh in language, it means understanding. I understand the fiqh, understand. Even any, anything, if you want to say, uh, I need to have fiqh in this thing. Fiqh means understanding in anything. It doesn't have, it doesn't mean fiqh only in Islamic. Fiqh in anything, fiqh in language, fiqh in how to uh, take care of, uh, for example, uh, patients, fiqh how to deal with, uh, uh, for example, um, uh, yani, for example, uh, the knowledge of understanding of anything in life about agriculture, anything. This is called fiqh. This man, he has fiqh, but fiqh in Arabic means understanding overall. It doesn't have to mean fiqh specifically for Islam. No, fiqh means understanding. This is the Arabic world, the meaning of fiqh. You can use it in many things. But what does it mean in Islamic? In Islamic way, fiqh as mustalah, we call it mustalah. It means rules, yani the, uh, the rules of knowledge, okay? The knowledge rules which we have it, which we extracted, that we get knowledge from it, the rules that it comes from the knowledge, okay? It is taken from the basic material. The fiqh, it is taken from the basic material. What are the basic material again? Are the Quran, the Sunnah, okay? So the fiqh, that we take it from the basic material, which we know it, whether Sunnah, whether Quran, or whether ijma' or whether qiyas. Just now we took qiyas. These are the rules, the knowledge that we get from. But the fiqh in language means understanding. All right, let us give some examples. Uh, there is an ayah Qur'aniya. Okay, I'll just go, I will exit like this. We read the ayah Qur'ani, insha'Allah. Inna salata kanat ala al-mu'minina kitaban mawkuta. Mawkuta. Okay, I'll try to make it more bigger. Inna salata kanat ala al-mu'minina kitaban mawkuta. Is this rule, it talks about Zakah? Prayer. No. It talks about a salah. Yes, prayer. So salah, it is a specific thing. Right? So it's a specific rule. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks about. Does he talk about food? No. Yes. So subhanallah, Allah azza wa jal, he has some rules. He put it in the Quran. It, it talks about a specific thing. It doesn't talk about the general thing. All right. Let us go to the second one. Other example. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu kutiba alaykum al-siyam. It talks about what? Fasting. Fasting. Yes, it talks about fasting. Does it talk about zakah? No. No. Any sign of zakah? Anything about charity? No. No. So this is called specific evidence. So this is an evidence, this rule, which you see it here, this is a specific evidence. And this rule here, it talks about the salah, it talks about a specific evidence. Is it a general evidence? No. It doesn't talk about general matter, right? It doesn't talk specific. about iman, it doesn't talk about yeah, anything. Specific, this about salah only. Yes, so this is an evidence which it shows in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to take care of the salah and to take us of the siyam, of fasting. So it is a specific evidence. So this is what we need to know today, which we are going to learn. There is an overall evidence and there is a specific evidence. Now you are familiar with the specific evidence. So let us see another example. All right. For example, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ 
فخذوه وما نهاكم عنه فانتهوا I don't know if anybody understand. Can anybody explain for me this uh, ayah? I don't understand about the Hada Arasulu. It's about the Hada Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I think. Okay. Wama atakum or Rasul, whatever the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he came with. فخذوا take it whatever Allah the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he came with the knowledge take it وما نهاكم عنه whatever the Prophet محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم forbidden you not to do it then don't take it be away from it so does it talk about salah no does it talk about siyam no it talks about the generally what it is forbidden uh, you yes, know generally anything the prophet whatever he said this is not allowed then take it consider it and whatever he said this is allowed then consider it so this is a general right. evidence so this is a general evidence that's why some people they come and tell us oh this is only sunnah it doesn't mean that we need to take it is it right what they said no it's not right so what do we understand the meaning of sunnah now? Sunnah is uh, if you do it, you, uh, you, you will not be punished. If you, don't do it, uh, if you don't do it, you will not be punished. If you do it, you will get the reward. It depends. But right? if we do it. But the idea is of this, the matter, does it mean that we need to exclude the sunnah? Yes. No. Who said yes? I know we need to include, not exclude. All right. We need to uh, we need to consider every time we need to yes. bear in our so mind. We, we need to consider and to reply back to the people when they say, Oh, it's this is only Sunnah, you don't need to do it. This is a, a, re, a, a very important matter. What the Prophet Muhammad brought for us, take it. It's what like is this guide, surah? guidance? It's like guidance, yeah. What do you mean? It's like guidance that uh, the, mm -hmm. this this you need to follow, and uh, this is not you, you you need to regret it like this. So yes. we are guided that this the things we need to do, and these are the things that we don't need to do. Yes. Yeah? So what I'm trying to say more emphasize emphasize about the sunnah. Some people they say that this sunnah. Is not important. Sunnah is important because Sunnah, the Prophet, he pro he provided for us. Okay, the sister said, could you please tell us which surah and I of this? Inshallah, will provide it for you, and we we'll write it here in the uh, uh, Inshallah here, and then you can study it within Allah Taala. Okay. So, بإذن الله تعالى. What we are trying to understand about the Sunnah and uh, the Quran and these kind of things, it's as the sister she said, yes, it is a guidance. There are some other things that it's a guidance, and there's another things which we shall follow. Actually, the Prophet, what he did in his life, and following the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it is many types. The following, like the general for the Ummah of the Ummah Muhammad, and there is a specific thing only for the Prophet. Yeah, and for example, specific thing for the prophet is like the marriage when he had, he could marry more than uh, four women, for example. This is specifically for him. But the other things, it is general for everyone who's allowed to do it. As the sister, she said, mubah, it is allowed. And some other things that we get punished and some other things that we don't get punished, but we get rewarded from it. But in general, following the sunnah is the best way. وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوا وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُوا all right, and another example. Who can read it? I don't know if you can read it. You know this hadith? I've heard about it. Okay, you have any clue about it? I cannot say the exact hadith, but what I heard about it is our inten our deeds will be judged by our intention, basing on our intentions. 
So the meaning, is it a specific intention here or it is a general intention? Does it talk only about Salah? No, it's a general intention. So if I said that today um, I have the intention to go and kill someone. Uh, no, it's about the deeds, you know, what we did. We will be judged according to our deeds, something like that. Yes, but if I have the intention to go and kill, so I'll be rewarded according to what I had from intention, right? No, you will not be rewarded. Why? Yes, if it's a good intention, you will be rewarded. But if it's a bad intention, you cannot do anything. I mean, you will not be punished. Yeah, and you mean if I didn't do the intention which I had it, I will not be punished? Yes. No, if you don't do... If you because don't it's do, just your intention. No, if okay. you don't do your intention, the bad without, intention... The okay. intention you will, without action you will is not, not be valid. punished. One by one, please, sister. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Yes. Intention without action will not be punished. You will not be punished because you didn't uh, do it. Which means it's just your intention. It's in your mind. Without All action, right. sister, there's no sister, evidence sister, on it. Sister Fatima, she's saying, if I have a bad intention in my heart and I didn't do it, okay, then I will not get punished. If I had a good intention in my heart, but I didn't do it, I get rewarded, right? This is what you said? Yeah. Yes. All right. And Sister Fatima Ramos, this is what you're saying also? Uh, I was saying that, for example, you have bad intention, right? Yes. And then you don't do it. You yes. forbid to do it because uh, it comes to you that, oh, this is uh, not right. And then okay. you have in the good intention and then you don't do, you, you, you also you don't do it, you will not be mm -hmm. rewarded. Okay, so both of ways I'm not rewarded. Yeah. Having bad deeds or good deeds, I'm not. Okay. Who has a different uh, opinion? Anybody has a different opinion? All right. I will ask a question and you raise your hand. If uh, you agree, if I want to do bad thing, okay, and I didn't do it for a reason, do I get reward? I mean, do I get the sin or not? If you agree, I get the sin, raise your hand. I didn't do it. I didn't do it, but something happened and stopped me not to do it. Do I get a sin or not? You still have that sin. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it comes, uh, you know, uh, you, you intend to do it, but the sin is there, but there is no punishment. And there is right. no there is, reward. There is a reward when we have the intention to do a sin or the desire, but we stop it. There is a reward for that. If we commit the sin, we have the, the, guilt, the guilt, the bad deed for the sin. But if we stop yeah, it, question, there is my a reward. Question is, I, I have, my question is, do I get a sin if no. I wanted i intended to do it but there is something happened it stopped me do i get bad uh, reward yes or no if who says yes raise your hand yes uh, sister floor you know why if you had the intention to do it and you were about to do it then yes because actually you you tried to do it something stopped you but it was not your will you it's like if you behaved um, exactly. doing the sin. That's true. So the answer for the sin, it depends on the human, what he felt. For example, he intended to harm someone and because of the people, he saw the people he backed off. He has that sin because he still have the intention of doing it or he didn't do it because the people surrounding this person, he, he felt shy or uh, any kind of reason, they, they uh, didn't do it. So yes, they get it. Okay, so we continue. It's covering everything, any kind of intention. Why did I buy this cup? Did I buy this cup to drink alcohol or did I buy this cup to 
to help يعني to drink it in the house that I can I can drink and it will help me to survive in my life and so on. Did I go, for example, to the gym for uh, meeting people or did I went there to, uh, to keep my health well? Or did, why did I uh, buy this car? Did I buy this car? Because I wanted to reach to other places which I cannot, I cannot reach it for a reason of X. Why did I buy this food? Why did I buy these clothes? Everything is counted in your life according to your intention. So keep in mind, don't think intention only in salah, intention only in doing, for example, fard thing or يعني, going to have a wudu or reading Quran or anything in the good deeds, that's only you put your intention or in fasting or anything else. No, no, no. Everything according to your intention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards you with it, whether in bad or it is in good. That's why in the judgment day when we will come in front of the, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal, everything is counted, even the atom. You will say, even this, Ya Allah, you counted? Yes, even this, it has been counted in your book. All right? So this hadith, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتُ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مَا نَوَى فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَاتُهُ لِلَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَهِجْرَاتُهُ لِلَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Okay? Uh, Sister Shamim. Okay, uh, Sister Fatima, she wrote, uh, mind action will be uh, judged or rewarded. Okay, and uh, Sister Shamim, she said, that verse is in Surah Hashar, verse number seven. Barakallahu feeki, wa jazakallahu khair. All right. So everything, this is a general evidence that we have it. Can anybody remind me what is the meaning of evidence as the evidence meaning? Is it fiqh or means usul? Usul. Yes. Barakallahu feeki. Okay. Now we continue. The differences between fiqh and usul al fiqh. Now I feel now, I hope it is more clear. Now if I say fiqh, you understand what is fiqh, right? And if I say usul al-fiqh, you understand what is the meaning of usul al-fiqh. Usul means, as she said, it is an evidence, right? Of fiqh. Fiqh is meaning understanding, or it could be what? You can cheat. Or rules of knowledge. Right? Knowledge, knowledge, yeah. Yes, all right. Now, what is fiqh? You remember that a square which we had, we said fiqh comes under its rules. So fiqh is regarding rules taken from a specific evidence, right? Because we mm -hmm. said, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said about the salah, about the siyam, this is a specific rule, right? Specific evidence. So the fiqh is regarding to rules taken from specific evidence. For mm -hmm. example, you can say the evidence of the salah, the evidence of the siyam. So the fiqh is rules taken from specific evidence. So the meaning fiqh has many rules, many specific rules, right? Till here it's clear or you feel it is not clear? It's clear. If anybody, if anything that's not clear, you can just Raise your hand because it's very important to understand. So if somebody says fiqh, fiqh means many things under the fiqh. It means tahara, means salah, means this. So it's specific rules, specific evidence. But usul al-fiqh, usul al-fiqh, usul al-fiqh means basics or foundation taking from the general evidence. So the fiqh by itself, only word fiqh is taking from a specific evidence. But usul al-fiqh, because the meaning of usul, if you remember, mm. what is the meaning of usul? It's usul the base of base. something. Base of or something. the evidence. Yes, the overall base. Usul means the overall base. So if we identify what is the meaning of usul al-fiqh, so it means the basic overall. foundation it's taking from the overall evidence or the general evidence. 
So we have two, two types of evidence. The specific, specific one. Evidence and the general evidence. Yes, so when I say usul al-fiqh means the general evidence. And mm. I, when I say fiqh, the meaning then, the specific, specific evidence. Specific evidence. Now we have the combined. Do you remember when we just now explained that the scholars explain uh, whether we explain it word by word, we just now we did it, and mm. or combined, like a nickname, apple tree, only one word, okay? So now we'll come to the combined meaning. Combined meaning usul al-fiqh as one word, okay? Not as a specific. Najib al-Din al-Baydawi, He's one, he's one of the first scholars who give an introduction of explanation what does usul al-fiqh as one word means. So he explained it as to know how to extract the knowledge from general evidence and benefit from it. Simple as that. I think so it's clear, right? It's like how to extract the knowledge from the general evidence and benefit from it. What are the general also evidence? The general of evidence, it comes from the Quran and from the Sunnah and all those, the general mm -hmm. statement, the general statement, for example, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ How can I take this general statement and I extract knowledge from it and I benefit from it, okay? Yeah. All right, this is for today, inshallah. Um, we just want to tell you that, as you know, this type of classes will have exams. If you remember the previous exams we had after five lectures, we had exam then another five lectures, we had the uh, exam and then we had the final exam. Some of the students, they said it is very difficult and it was uh, really congested material and we couldn't focus much and it was difficult. Um, so if you're okay with this idea, we can go forward with it. Specifically, yeah, yeah. we have 15, uh, okay, specific that that was the old one, but because we took the uh, the comments from the students, so we will say after each two lessons, okay, uh, we will have like a, a quiz thing, okay, mm -mm. after two lectures that you can study after each two lectures, and then we'll yeah. have the midterm. We'll combine, mm -hmm. let us say, twelve lectures or ten lectures. Then we'll have the midterm, and mm -hmm. then. Whatever we had in the midterm will not come in the final. So the final will be the remaining material, if it is okay, okay. with you. Yeah, right. it's fine. It's okay. okay, so we will sure, have I'm each not. two lectures, we'll have uh, each two lectures, we'll have uh, quizzes. And mm. from the quizzes, then we'll have the midterm, the combined one. And then before going to the final, again, we'll have the quizzes, the two lecture, two lecture, two lecture, and then whatever the remaining after the midterm, then we're going to have the exam. So whatever it was in the midterm will not be available in the final exam if it is easier for you to study the material in that way. But it will be a lot because some of the students, they will say that I miss this exam, I miss this exam, so I don't want it to make it difficult for you. So think about it. You don't have to answer now. You can answer the coming lecture, inshallah. And we'll be voting for everyone. All right? Inshallah. 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 Barakallahu fikum wa jazakumullahu khayra. Um, so if you are fine with the lecture to have it on Saturday, we'll keep on Saturday if it is suitable for you, inshallah. As you can see, if yeah. we'll keep it on Saturday, we're going to finish on the 21st of October. And we're going to finish on October, inshallah. Do you feel yeah. it is long or you want it shorter? It's not nice. It's okay it's because we, the more we gain knowledge, you know, it will help us. But sometimes it is the opposite way. The more, like, more time, then you could run no. away. No, 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 because, uh, <laughs> you know, if short ten, maybe it will be, you know, we need the brief, the, the long explanation. So it's more understandable on our part because, you know, we are mo new Muslims. So we need sure. a better understanding and better explanation because we're going to live within our hearts. I agree. Inshallah. Khalas, we take everybody's vote and we're going to take vote on uh, Telegram. I'm not sure who's not in Telegram. Can they raise their hands? Okay, uh -huh. Sister Lafmur, she says the uh, long class is better. I remember last time you had a different view. You said short ones is better. Okay, raise your hands who, who are okay. What was my question before raising your hand, Sister Shirley? Short or long? 
short or long? Oh, uh, first, ask for the short. I will not raise my hand. <laughs> okay. Uh, so whoever, let us go with the long. So if you are okay, sisters, with October, we're going to end in October. Is it okay for you? So who are okay, then we can go with it. This is one. Only two people. All right. Uh, who's uh, who's on Telegram? Who, who's not on Telegram? Sorry. Who, who's not with us on Telegram? That was the question. Sister, all, all she... No, there, one, there was one sister. She said she's not in Telegram. Okay, Sister Cheryl? Yeah. All right, Sister Cheryl. Uh, do you want to be with Cheryl. us in Telegram? Okay, can you write? Uh, I don't have uh, uh, the application Telegram. All right. Um, it, can you download it? Uh, which group are you, Sister, in the Quran? Which, which group are you? Which number of group? I don't know if you know it. All right, sister. Okay, it's the first time to attend. No problem. This is the first lecture, actually. So if you want to join us on Telegram, we're going to send it on the WhatsApp, inshallah, that you can uh, join once you download it. It's much better. Sometimes we do quizzes, we do some other stuff, and we do some discussions there on the Telegram. We don't do it on the WhatsApp, to be honest. The WhatsApp is only just a reminder for the lectures and the general things only on the WhatsApp. But the Telegram, it is the main group for the discussion for these kind of things. So welcome, sisters. We are happy to have you. Barakallahu fikum wa jazakum Allahu khairan. Subhanakallahu wa hamdik. Ashadu la ilaha ant. Nastaghfiruka. Wa natubu ilayk. Jazakum Allahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, teacher. I already take the MRI and I'm just waiting for the result. Please make dua for me. 